Aru, they are hard for the show. Romemu, Adonai, Elokeiru, Vetish Takaru, they are hard for the show. Ki, 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 Kadosh, Adonai, Eloheinu, Romemu. Adonai Eloheinu Romemu Romemu Adonai Eloheinu Vekish Tavkavu Ehadodesho Romemu Adonai Eloheinu Vekish Tavkavu Ehadodesho Ki Ki Adonai Eloheinu Romemu Ki, Ki, Ki Kadosh Adonai Eloheinu Romemu Ki, Ki, Ki Kadosh Adonai Eloheinu Yama my 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 Yama my 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 Yama my 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 Yama my 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 Yama my 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 Yama my 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 Ketakel ha'ares Biram ha'yam Udelo Yisberku ha'shamayi Ketakel ha'ares Biram ha'yam Yomeho Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom, everyone. It's wonderful to have you all here. Um, if you notice, that I'm, I'm a little bit uh, hyped up. <laughs> it's because I just got to celebrate Shabbat with all of our youngest, youngest members, and they bring such a wonderful energy, and I am expecting you all to bring that energy again here as well. Okay? We're in this together, though, so... A canter and I will be bringing it together, but it's Shabbat. It's a wonderful time to celebrate, and whether you're here in person with us or joining us virtually through the magic of the internet, we're so glad that you've chosen to celebrate and recognize Shabbat with us this evening. Uh, we begin, um, uh, one of the things that I, I want to remember to mention is you will notice that uh, some of your prayer books may have two sets of numbers if you're using the thinner, the narrower pair, prayer book. You want to follow along with the larger numbers. That's how we'll all stay together. And so, we begin our service with lighting the candles, which can be found on page 120. As these Shabbat candles give light to all who behold them, so may we, by our lives, give light to all who behold us. As their brightness reminds us of the generations of Israel who have kindled light, so may we, in our own day, be among those who kindle light. I did so well last week. Uh, 
Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kitshanu Bemitzvota Vitzivanu Lahadlik Ner Shel Shabbat. Amen. And as we hear the sounds of our uh, children in the, in the background, we are reminded that we observe Shabbat not just for ourselves, uh, but for the generations that come ahead of us. It's not just about kindling these lights and keeping the traditions of our congregation alive from generation to generation, but it's about practicing and remembering that the spirit that we imbue, we, we imbue into ourselves is also going to be extended to a generation we may never see. Those will be parents someday, and they will be occupying these seats someday. It's important for us to keep these traditions alive for them. It's called a shalshelet misora, a chain of tradition. So in keeping with that chain of tradition, please stand, raise yourselves to a higher plane of holiness as we welcome the Shabbat with the Kiddushat Hayom, the sanctification of the day found on page 123 as we sing together the Kiddush. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Borei peri hagafen Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher kideshanu b'mitzvotav Firatzavanu Fishabat kodesho Be'ahav b'avratzon Inichilanu Zikoro lemaase fereshit ki hoy omet hiro nemikro e kodesh zeher letziot mihitzayin ki vanu vacharta feota. Adonai Mekadesh HaShabbat And we say together L'chaim Shabbat Shalom and please be seated L'chaim David Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Wonderful. So I have a fun fact for you this evening. The land of Er excuse me, I got ahead of myself. The land of Israel is often called, and let's see if you know this song, Eretz Zavat Chalav. Chalav. Udvash, exactly. And Udvash, this means a land flowing with milk and Honey, exactly. So that's the easy part. The Torah comes, or this phrase comes from the Torah in a couple of different places. But now here's the tough question. In making this statement, what type of honey is the Torah talking about? Now before, before we really get into it, a quick aside, because I've asked this question to a few different groups before, and the best answer that I got came from a high school student. I asked, what type of honey? And one of them shouted out, metaphor honey. Sometimes when they're trying to be smart, Alex, they're actually just being smart, because of course this is a metaphor, but it still does refer to the actual food. And of course, honey comes from bees, except maybe not in this case. So in this week's Torah portion, a kev, Moses reminds the people of all of the wonderful aspects about the land which God is giving them. Specifically, God, through Moses, mentions that the land of Israel is a land of wheat and barley, 
vines, figs, and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land where you can eat your, you can eat your fill of food without end and never lack for anything. So let's go through that again. Really focus on the food this time. A land of wheat, one. Barley, two. Vines, or really grapes, three. Figs, four. Pomegranates, five. Olive oil, or olives, six. And honey, seven. Seven foods. These, and this is where the term comes from, are the seven species. The seven fruits and grains that are among the most prosperous and the primary staple foods which grow in the land of Israel. But we need to go through that one more time. Again, the seven fruits and grains that grow in the land of Israel are wheat, barley, grapes, figs, pomegranates, olives, and honey. What is honey doing on this list? It's not a fruit, it's not a grain, it doesn't grow, it's actually not abundant at all, at least in its natural form. But here in Akev, it appears on the list of the abundant seven species, all fruits and grains. Well, this is because dvash, in this case, refers not to honey from bees, but date honey, a thick syrup made from mashing dates. It's about the same consistency as regular honey, and it is just as sweet, and I would say sometimes it tastes even sweeter. And thus, the seventh of the seven species is not honey itself, but dates. Now, if you remember that quote from Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse 8, you will notice that the verse is naturally divided into two sections. A land of wheat, barley, vines, figs, pomegranates, and a land of olive oil and honey. The first five are whole fruits. They're, the, they're whole foods, the fruit or the grain itself. While the last two, the last two, are products of that fruit. Olive oil, not just olives, and date honey, not just dates. These last two take the fruits, already good to eat, and turn them into something even more valued. In English, you might liken this, or you might say, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. But here the Jewish version could be, when life gives you dates, make honey. Or I suppose you could say, when life gives you olives, make olive oil, but I, I think the dates and honey just sounds nicer. It works better as a metaphor. But either way, the point is to take something good and make it even better. Sweeter, richer, fuller, more vibrant, more joyous, more wonderful, like making honey from dates. This is useful advice, because there may be times when life gives you lemons and you can make lemonade, but there are plenty of times where life gives you lemons and they stay lemons. And even lemonade will always be a little bit sour. In these moments, and really all moments, it is likely of far more value to focus on and embrace the Jewish version. When life gives you dates, make honey. Take the things that are sweet and make them sweeter. Because even if life gives you lemons, there are almost certainly some dates lying around too. Now, if this uh, extended blob of metaphor honey is not working for you, let me explain what I mean. There are always challenges in our lives, always obstacles to be overcome. Sometimes they actually can be spun into the positive, turned into motivation or lessons. An extreme example of this, Michael Jordan, the greatest basketball player of all time, was famously cut from his varsity basketball team in high school. This rejection fueled his competitive spirit and propelled him to his Hall of Fame career. But often life is far less impactful or dramatic. Ugh, I have to go to the DMV today. Well, at least that'll give me time to play that new game on my phone or 
at least it's near my favorite store and it'll give me an excuse to go shopping. All right. So yes, we absolutely should try to make the best of everything, but those last couple of examples are not actually turning the negative into the positive, something sour into something sweet. When you have to go to the DMV, even if you tack on something else that you enjoy, like your favorite store, you still have to go to the DMV. And chances are that that trip, however long it takes, likely won't be particularly meaningful nor inspiring. It just won't. There are many things that fall into this category of the mundane. And when confronted by those, it's far better to focus on those things which are already positive in your life. By taking the things and the people that we love and elevating them, we make the mundane and even the negative more tolerable. It makes us more resilient. And in fact, when you try to look on the bright side and say things like, well, at least I'll have time to play that new game, that's what you're doing. You're focusing on something that's already positive, already sweet. This is making honey from dates. However, when you do it in that way, when you take the positive activities and you make them conditional on the negative, because I have to wait at the DMV, I get to play that game, or after I go to the DMV, I can go to my favorite store, we actually reduce the sweetness of that already sweet thing, turning it into nothing more than a distraction. In those moments, we are only covering up the bitter, trying to avoid, ignore, or hide from it. But try as we might, we can't get rid of it. Instead, we are better served to just accept the mundane and even the negative as part of life. By doing so, by not trying to spin it or cover it up, we can separate the tedious from the stimulating and thus spend less time and mental energy thinking about the unpleasant. This will then allow us to devote more of our energy and devote all of our energy more fully and more intentionally to the things that we do enjoy, that we do care about making the sweet all the sweeter. And Akev gives us the path to accomplish this. Umaltem et arlat levavachem. Circumcise the foreskin of, your, foreskin of your heart. It's a weird phrase. But this metaphoric statement encourages us to remove the tough layers surrounding our heart, to open ourselves up to the world around us. Yes, this makes us more vulnerable, but that is the point. When we put up those defenses to keep out the mundane, the unpleasant, the negative, we also block a lot of the good, the enjoyable, the wonderful, the things that make life worth living. By lowering our defenses and accepting that we will experience pain and boredom from time to time, we increase our sensitivity all the more so to the good. And we might even find we appreciate being able to feel the not so good as well. By making ourselves vulnerable, by opening ourselves up to the world around us, we become more attuned to ourselves, our emotions, our connections, our relationships, our community to nature and the divine itself. All of these are sources of positive energy and add to the sweetness, the richness of our life, leading to satisfaction and meaning. So the next time that life gives you lemons, say thank you and accept them. They might turn into lemonade, but regardless, today, tomorrow, on Shabbat or not, look for those wonderful dates. They're there, and turn them into even more delicious honey. May we all open ourselves up to the possibilities, making our lives and the world all the sweeter. Shabbat shalom. Thank you. We turn to page 138 
as we welcome the Sabbath bride with the Ha Do Di. Lichato di li kragala Ne shabbat ne kabela Lichato di li kragala Ne shabbat ne kabela Shabbat is a home, tiri burechan Ishmianu Elham Yuchad, Adonai Echad, Ushemo Echad. We remain standing as we turn to page 146 for our call to worship, the Baruchu. Baruchu et Adonai Oh, 
149. Please join with me as we read in the English, excuse me, page 151. Please join with me as we read together at the top of the page. As you taught Torah to those whose names I bear, teach me Torah too. Its mystery beckons, yet I struggle with its truth. You meant Torah for me. Did you mean the struggle for me too? Don't let me struggle alone. Help me to understand, to be wise, to listen, to know. Lead me into the mystery. Baruch Ata Adonai, Ohev Amo Yisrael, page 152. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Please be seated as we turn to page 154 and chant the Veha. Behol of Abacha, Uberhol Nafsheha, Uberhol Meodeha, Veha you had a varim ha ele, Asher Anohi, Metsaveha, Hayom Aleva Veha, Vishinanta ham Levaneha, Vedibarata pam, Beshifteha, Habeteha. Uverechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrechrech
ja am liefen de Bosche u Miria. We take this moment to pray that God watch over us as we lie down and as we rise up to a life renewed and hopefully to peace. As we move towards the Amidah, we can't forget that it is Shabbat. We have to celebrate, we have to remember, we have to keep Shabbat. And so on page 162, we join together as we sing this Shamru. Shabbat, et ha Shabbat, la asotet ha Shabbat, 
de toro tam de toro tam perit olam than the Jewish people has kept Shabbat, Shabbat has kept the Jewish people. We turn together to page 164, and I invite you to rise for our Amidah, the standing prayer. Adonai sifatai riftach ufiyagitehi latecha Adonai Open up my lips, that my mouth may declare your praise. Page 166. Baruch Atah Adonai. Elohei 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 Rachel, Elohei Leha, Ha El Hagadol, Hagibor Vehanora, El Hel Yon, Gomel Hasarim Tovim, Vekonei Hakol, Vizoher Haste Avot Vimahot, who may be Gula live and even a him, Lemma Anshemo Beahava, Melech Ozer Moshia, whom again Baruch Ata Donai, Magain Avraham, Vezrat Sarab, age 168, Atagi Bol Olam Madonai, Mechaye Hakol Ata Rav Lehoshia. Mohorid ha tal, mechal ken ha yim bechazer, mechaye ha kol berachamim rabim, so mech no frim verofehorim, o matir asurim, o mechayem emunato lishene yafar, picha mocha. Al Kivurot, O me do meroch, Melech may beat, O Mechahaye, O Mats me at Yeshua, Vene Eman atale achayot, Akol, Baruch ata donai, 
Mechayeh HaKol. Page 170. Ata Kadosh Veshimcha Kadosh Ukadoshim Bechol Yom Yahalaluhu Chasela Baruch Ata Adonai HaEhel HaKadosh. Please be seated. On page 173, at the top of the page, I invite you to join me in the English. May these hours of rest and renewal open our hearts to joy and our minds to truth. May all who struggle find rest on this day. May all who suffer find solace. May all who hurt find healing on this day. May all who despair find purpose. May all who hunger find fulfillment on this day. And may this day fulfill its promise. Baruch Ata Adonai Mekadesh HaShabbat. Page 175. You are with us in our prayer, our love, and our doubt. In our longing to feel your presence and do your will, you are the still, clear voice within us. Therefore, O oh God, when doubt troubles us, when anxiety makes us tremble, when pain clouds the mind, we look inward for the answer to our prayers. There may we find you, and there find courage, insight, and endurance. And let our worship bring us closer to one another, that all Israel and all who seek you may find new strength for your service. Baruch Ata Adonai, she'otcha levadcha b'yir'ah na'avod. We read together on the top of page 177. God of goodness, we give thanks for the gift of life, wonder beyond words, for the awareness of soul, our light within, for the world around us so filled with beauty, for the richness of the earth which day by day sustains us. For all these and more, we offer thanks. Baruch ata Adonai, hatov shimcha ulacha na'e lehodot. In this moment, as we are in our prayer, the Amidah, one of the central prayers, also known as the Hatefilah, the prayer. We turn to page 300 and, sorry, give me just one moment. 76, thank you. you great memory. Page 300, yeah. <laughs> page 376, as I offer this prayer for our country. O guardian of life and liberty, may our nation always merit your protection. Teach us to give thanks for what we have by sharing it with those who are in need. Keep our eyes open to the wonders of creation and alert to the care of the earth. May we never be lazy in the work of peace. May we honor those who have died in defense of our ideals. Grant our leaders wisdom and forbearance. May they govern with justice and compassion. Help us all to appreciate one another and to respect the many ways that we may serve you. May our homes be safe from affliction and strife and our country be sound in body and spirit. To which we all say, Amen. And I offer this prayer for the state of Israel written by Anat Hoffman. My God, in this sacred moment, Give us hope for Israel and her future. Renew our wonder at the miracle of the Jewish state. In the name of the pioneers who made the deserts bloom, give us the tools to cultivate a diversity of Jewish expression in Israel. In the name of our fallen soldiers, give us courage to stand up to the words and ways of zealots, those in our own midst and those among our neighbors. In the name of Israeli inventors who have amazed the world with their innovations, help us apply the same ingenuity to finding a path to peace. In the name of all these individuals, grant us the strength to conquer doubt and despair in Israel, replacing doubt with action, replacing despair with hope. And let us say, Amen. It's also here in the prayer that we turn our thoughts to those who it may be ourselves it may be a loved one it may be someone in our community 
or maybe a complete stranger who is in need of healing and of help. We think of them and they, we hold them in our heart as we send strength to them and all who are entrusted with their care. If you are thinking of someone today, I invite you to rise so that we may recognize you and them. And I invite you to share their name out loud now. may be seated. We turn to page 371 for Misha Bayrock. silent meditation to say the prayers of your heart. Melech, 
תרון מלך, מלך לכל אדום, לכל השלום. My name is Leslie Yaffe, and I'm a member of the United Hebrew Board of Trustees, and it's been a long time since I've been up here. <laughs> Torah study begins at 9 a.m. in the chapel or via Zoom. Shabbat morning services will begin at 10.30 in the sanctuary and via live stream. Upcoming events, join us on Sunday, August 28th from 11 to 12.30 for the Welcome Back Potluck Picnic as we welcome Rabbi Reinhardt and the new program and school year. And everybody should have gotten their New Year's booklets by now and it tells you a little more information about that. So please join in. On Tuesday, August 30th at 6.30 in the chapel or via Zoom will be a class, Kol Shofar, Kol Yisrael. Whose voice are we hearing? And you can hear the sound of the shofar and its various sounds. This is interesting. Mindfulness Shabbat on Saturday, September 3rd. Nine o'clock is Torah study, followed by 10.30, singing bowls meditation. And if anybody knows what that is, please come tell me afterwards. 11.30 to 12.30, welcoming in the new year do-it-yourself projects. 12.30 to two, lunch break. I know what that is, I can tell you. Two to 3.30, creating your tree of mindfulness. For more information on upcoming classes and programs, please visit the UH website. And thank you to our tech team for making it possible for all of us to be together virtually tonight. Really, thank you so much. And the gift shop will be open Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays from 12 to 3 o'clock or by appointment. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. The uh, singing bowls, so I was luckily, I was lucky enough to experience it a couple weeks ago, and someone put it that it's almost like taking a bath in sound. Um, it's quite cool. Uh, so, this week, before we get to a couple special blessings, uh, 
thank you for everyone for being here, and I'm glad many of you came early for our nosh. Uh, our nosh this evening was sponsored by Lori and Maury Poskover in honor of their 56th wedding anniversary, and it's a great opportunity this week to honor them in, in terms of this nosh because it's also the week when we uh, do our blessings for those who have anniversaries in the month of we're in August, right? We're in August, the month of August. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, as we read your name, we invite you to rise if you're having an anniversary. So, of course, Lori and Maury Poskover, your 56th anniversary, please stand up. And it was August 14th, so just a few days ago. And Alan and Susan Cohen, on August 12th, will be celebrating 49 years of wedded bliss. Wonderful. And if anyone has an anniversary that we miss, please do stand up. We want to recognize you. Wonderful. How many years? 34. Wonderful. Mazel tov. And so we offer you this blessing. Eternal one, source of... Sh excuse me. Eternal one, source and shelter, light and truth. Bless these couples who celebrate a wedding anniversary with the simplicity and the splendor of the love that binds two together, their gentleness and the grandeur, their hope and the faith, the trust and the forgiveness as they continue their lives together. Bless them with continued abundance, with health, with joy, with good fortune, and a home filled with the blessings of Torah and the beauty of mitzvot. Love, a gift, a blessing, a legacy, an inheritance. May it continue to shine throughout your days. May it continue to radiate throughout your years. May it continue to guide you and shelter you with the brilliance and the blessings from God's Sukkot Shalom, God's tabernacle of peace, all the days of your lives. And we as a community all together wish these individuals, Amen. Amen. Congratulations, everyone, on your incredible anniversaries. If you are still standing, still standing, because you're going to stand up again in about two seconds. You're right. Thank you. I almost forgot. Because as we come towards the conclusion of our service, we turn to page 586, and we rise for the Aleinu. Aleinu <laughs> Kemish pechota adama Shelo samech alakeinu kahem Vekor aleinu Kechol hamonam Vaanachadu Oreim Umeishkachavim Umotim Rifnei melech Maole Hamlakim Hakadosh Baruch Page 591. Please be seated. Page 593. The light of life is a finite flame. Like the Shabbat candles, life is kindled, it burns, it glows. It is radiant with warmth and beauty, but soon it fades. Its substance is consumed, and it is no more. In light we see, in light we are seen. The flames dance and our lives are full. But as night follows day, the candle of our life burns down and gutters. There is an end to the flames. We see no more and are seen no more. Yet we do not despair, for we are more than a memory, slowly fading into darkness. With our lives we give life. Something of us can never die. We move in the eternal cycle of darkness and death, 
of light and life. This week, our heartfelt condolences go out to Eunice Evelyn Bayliss, who died just in the past seven days. And we hold close those in the family of those who have died in the past month, as we remember in the period of Shloshim, Dina Gunnan, Joan Quicksilver, Arthur Lister Scharf, and Sherman Sklar. We add to these those who have died at this time in seasons past as we remember the yard site of George Alberstadt, Gerald J. All, Bertha B. Aviram, Shelley M. Bain, Evelyn Eva Berger, Sidney Bierman, Robert M. Bierman, Betty Liner Burke, Matilda Gentle Caruso, Harry Diener, Stanley Dobkin, Leon Bram Eder, Max David Freiberger, Rebecca Golan, Robert C. Gorin, Libby Lerner Harris, Leah Hyken, Leroy A. Canterman, Fred Kleiman, James I. Colton, Anna Kravitz, Teresa Ann Lee, Barbara Lo excuse me, Barbara Laurie, Helen Lee Maniloff, Robert Werner Minner, Minnie G. Mitgang, Patricia Ann Miserani, Samuel Morgan, Anna Sofer Novison, Faye M. Pittler, Joseph Robbins, Anna Rodenberg, Leo J. Rothbart, Philip Rubin, Rose Rudman, Hugo Shamist, Nathan C. Schieber, Melvin R. Shapiro, Sophia Sherman, Daniel Sherman, Emil Simon, Alice Solomon, Selma Thea, Solomon W. Thurman, Rose B. Weinberg, Gertrude Weintraub, Joseph Weiss, and Beverly Winterman. We turn to page 598, and we rise together as one community for our mourners' Kaddish. Yit Gadal, Yit Kadash Shemei Rabbah, Be'alma Divrach Yirte, Viam Lich Machute, Bechayechon, Uvyomechon, Uvchaye de Hol Beit Yisrael, Bagala, Vizman Kariv, Vimru, Amen. Yehe Shemei Rabbah, Mivarach, Le'alam, Olame Almaya. Yit barach, the yishtabach, viet paar, viet romam, viet nase, viet hadar, viet ale, viet halal, shame de kudsha, brihu, the ela min ko birchata vishirata, tush pechata vinechamata, dami ram belma vim ru, amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shemaya, the chayim alenu vel kol yisrael, vim ru, amen. O se shalom bim romav, Hu yaase shalom, alenu vel kol Yisrael, vimru, amen. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us, to all Israel, and to all who mourn, to which we say, amen. And I wish you all a Shabbat shalom. Oh, we have someone coming up to help yes, lead us in song. Yes, we are going to invite wish, Brandon Fred. Wonderful. I'm, I, I wish you all a Shabbat shalom. I hope this Shabbat that you are able to find peace, look for peace, and make it even more peaceful. And so we... Uh, we conclude with Kine Matov, and Brandon's coming up because his parents are celebrating that wonderful anniversary, and as you know, he sings it well. <laughs> Naim Shevrakim Gam Yachad Hinei Matovu Manaim Shevrakim Gam Yachad Hinei Matovu Manaim
Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. <laughs>